Ladies and gentlemen, this is the third part of the top React interview questions. In this part, we are going to look at obviously some React interview question and also something new, Redux interview questions as well. And there will be, will be a fourth episode of this series. In that, we will look at some project related questions. Let's say if you are given a coding exercise related to Re React and Redux or take home exercise and what kind of questions they can ask in those exercises and how to handle those projects and feel free to check out the entire series i'll provide a link here and welcome to taxi tutorials okay so here's the first question and i'm gonna start with a simpler one and uh, it's gonna become difficult as we go forward first question is why can't you update the state directly without using set state now i would suggest pause the video Think about the answer and then you can compare my answer with yours. Okay, so the answer is that set state will always trigger re-rendering of the component because you do want to re-render when, when the state is changed so that your view is updated. That is also one of the reasons why when you actually use a set state, inside you create a copy of the state first, then modify that, and then, then pass it to the set state. And directly setting the state won't really do that. And that is why you're not allowed to actually update the state directly. Why would you ask this question if you're an interviewer? I think it is important to ask this question because this shows that you know the fundamentals of React and how actually React, React don't works and how the state works. Okay, so the next question, which is also a little bit easier, <laughs> how many ways can you conditionally render in React? Again, pause the video, think about the answer and you can compare. Okay. Here's the first way. You can use an if statement. So based on a condition, you can return a statement. This is how, this is a one way to conditional render. The second way to conditional render is using nn expression. Here, if is liar is true, then it would render pants on fire. Third way to conditional render is using conditional operator. Is liar is true, then it would render whatever follows after a question mark else it would render you are nice. Why would you ask this question? I think it's pretty reasonable question. If you're using React, sooner or later, you have to conditionally render something. And so if you are either junior or mid-level or expert, you all need to know this. So I think it's a valid question. So there is no such thing as why not. All right, so the next question is, what is fragments and why do we use it in React? Again, pause the video and think about it. Okay, so the answer to this question is, whenever you render a component, you only render single child. You can have a tree, so you can have a child within, within a child, but you cannot do this at the moment directly inside React, where you are actually returning multiple child, children. And the interview also asks you, why would you wanna do this way? Why won't you just wrap all this three all three children into a single parent always wrap things with an additional tag which is makes too many tags and it creates problem when you use css so it's rather good if you have two tags two children that you want to render you should be able to do it so react found a way using react fragments and this is a syntax if you're using webpack make sure that you are using the latest version of webpack Otherwise, this syntax uh, won't work. It will actually satisfy the single child rule. But in reality, when it renders, uh, it renders three children in this case. Why would you ask this question? I think you were use, if you were using older version of React, uh, you probably won't know this question. So if somebody cannot, uh, won't be able to answer this, it's okay. But if they can't answer this, it's a brownie point. The next question is how do how to do code splitting in React? Again, pause the video and think about it. So the answer to this question is when when the React code compiles to so the bundler basically create a single bundle, which is usually very large. It bundles your entire application into one single file. And that can be problematic if you have a huge project. So your initial load, when you, when you load the application for the first time, that could be very huge. And there are cases where user 
may only visit few pages. Do you need all the pages to be loaded if they're gonna only visit few pages? So React introduced a way to split the code into multiple bundles. And so React introduced dynamic import and also call lazy loading. And this is how it works. So you use React lazy to import a particular component, which means this will be a separate bundle. Your main app is loaded. Now this is actually loading asynchronously. So while it's loading, you need to have provide some sort of fallback component, which will render a loader or something so that your code doesn't break. I do have a tutorial on it. Uh, I'll provide a link here. And this is actually how you provide a fall fallback component using suspense. The so suspense is also another thing that React introduced uh, along with lazy. All right, why should you ask this question? This is a tricky question because again, this was introduced in a recent version of JavaScript. So a lot of people probably don't know this. However, you should know how your bundler works. So even if I ask you how to split the code, which is a concept, you should know that code splitting, which means lazy loading. So as a concept, you should know. You may not be able to write the code or explain how it works in React. So I would accept that answer. Okay, so the next, we're gonna move to Redux interview questions. And one of the first question is, what are some alternatives to Redux? Again, pause the video and think about it. Here are some of the alternatives to Redux. And the first two are probably most famous, MobX. A lot of people are using MobX instead of Redux because MobX came later. The second option is if you're using, let's say GraphQL in the backend, uh, then you would be using most probably Apollo client, which allows you to communicate with your uh, GraphQL server much efficiently because you're gonna be sending graph queries to your server. And so if you're using this, then there's no need for uh, using Redux. And the third option is you can use reactive extension like RxJS to do it. And there are other options as well. And then there are a lot of newer options coming out, you know, probably every single month. I don't know, I'm not keeping up. These are the main ones. Why would you ask this question? This is more like a, a design question. If you are a seasoned engineer, are you keeping up with the technology trend? Uh, knowing this means that you know what's going on outside. So if you are like a senior or principal engineer or architect, you should know this question. Because when you design a React project, you need when you think about toolings, you need to evaluate certain options. Redux, as you know, is not the only option that you need to know that. Okay, the next question is, this is a very commonly asked question called, what is Redux middleware? If you're using Redux, then you should know this. So pause the video and think about it. So the concept of middleware is you add another layer in the middle of your main layer, right? So that it does something in the middle before going to the third step. So let's look at the Redux architect. So here's a, a Redux architect. You have UI, which dispatches some action. Let's say if you wanna save some data to, this, to the server. In that case, you would make a post request and it saves some data to the server. And at the same time, your Redux would have an action that reaches a reducer that updates your local state. And this both needs to be in sync, your local state and the, the server side, right? Now, there are cases where the update to the server might fail. In that case, what really happens? Your your store is already updated with a new state, but your now DB is behind because post really failed. And that will be a problem because as soon as you dispatch an action, it goes directly to the store. While a post is an asynchronous. So the solution is middleware. So the middleware, what it does as a concept, it first sends the post request that goes to the server. And when there is a response coming back, a positive response, say, hey, now I, I finished updating the DB, now update the local store so that 
your database and your local store is always in sync. Why would you ask this question? Well, if you're using Redux, then this is a very valid question because you might be using at least one of the middle. Why not? Well, imagine if you're not using Redux, then, and if you're using, let's say, Apollo client or something, you probably don't know how it works. Uh, so if that's the case, then I think you shouldn't even ask. So when the interview comes, interviewee comes in, you should ask, okay, what is, what do you know? Uh, which system do you use? Do you use Redux? If the guy is not using Redux, don't ask this question. Next question is, what is the difference between Redux Saga and Redux Tang? Again, pause the video and think about it. First of all, Redux Saga and Redux Tang, they're both middlewares, both Redux middleware. So we looked at the previous example of how middleware works, right? So they, they both do the same thing, but a little differently. Let's first look at Redux Tang. So imagine when you dispatch an action, it reaches reduce right away. So think of this uh, first line, let A equal to one. As soon as you execute this line, it would work right away. But if I, if I wrap this into a function called action creator, this runs when I execute this. So I can delay this. And that's pretty much happens with Redux Funk. So here, instead of dispatching action directly, you create an action creator. This is a function that first does things that are asynchronous, uh, like saving data to the server. This will be a promise. And when that promise is resolved, then with the positive response, then you send an action. So your response determines if the action should be dispatched or not. So instead of sending action right away, you create an action creator, which does the whole, works as a middleware. Now let's look at Saga. Saga works a little differently. Instead of creating an action creator, a function, you just dispatch the action. So Saga catches that action from the middle and it does exactly the same thing. It first does whatever asynchronous things that it needs to do, like post, mm -hmm. and then once the response comes back positive, then it sends another action, not the same action. Let's say this, the name of this action could be ABC. This should be, this could be DEF, right? Because if it sends the same action, then when I catch it again, it would do the same thing. And it uses this special function called generator function. With the Redux Tunk, you would use some sort of promise, uh, which returns, and then you have then function, which only executes when the a promise is resolved. Here, it uses generator function. It works a little differently. So within this generator function, things are more synchronous, which means if I have this two yields, so the first yield does something, and then the second yield does something. So the second line won't execute until the first line is finished. So within this uh, function, generator function, uh, things are asynchronous as long as you use this yield. So it's blocks. The syntax are a little bit clear. Uh, however, a lot of people uh, get thrown off by this generator function because they don't know how they behave. But actually, it's pretty simple. Also, another difference between Saga and Thunk is in Saga, you can actually cancel action. So uh, once you dispatch because you're catching it, you can actually cancel it. So why would you ask this question if you're an interviewer? Again, if the person is not a Redux, Redux person, then you should not ask this question. So first ask them, do you know Redux? If the answer is yes, then ask this question. Also, they may be using something else. They may be using like a Redux Promise or some, some other middleware that is not Saga or Thunk. In that case, this is an invalid question because they would not know about it. All right, so that's all folks uh, in this so next would be the fourth episode of this series, fourth and final episode. That's where we're gonna look at some of the design questions and some of the project-based questions like uh, what kind of projects can be given to you, uh, coding exercise at least. Uh, it could be a phone interview or on-site or take-home exercise. And we're gonna look at all of them and how to answer them. And if you're not following the entire series, please do so, I'll provide a link here in the corner. And those who are new to my channel, I have an entire React series 
uh, please check it out. I'll provide a link here. And I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please like. Don't forget to like. Like, subscribe, and provide a nice comment. And I'm always looking for translators. And it's pretty easy. And the information is in the description. Thank you.